This is a part two to me speaking about the movie Sound of Freedom, which is based off of Tim Ballard, a former Department of Homeland Security agent who is supposedly combating this particular issue here, which I will have to only refer to vaguely in order to keep this video on YouTube, so I apologize in advance for that. So Tim Ballard is the founder of Operation Underground Railroad, and he is also a board member of the Nazarene Fund, which seeks to save oppressed religious minorities in the Middle East. And Ballard spent over a decade as a special agent for the, Depart for the Department of Homeland Security, where he is deployed as an undercover operative. He has worked every type of case imaginable in the fight to dismantle these particular types of rings, and he has worked undercover in the U.S. in multiple foreign countries to infiltrate these types of organizations, and he's been featured all over different news outlets such as ESPN with the Pittsburgh Steelers head coach, Fox and Friends, Fox News Sunday, and the Glenn Beck program. And he's briefed the President of the United States and other cabinet members on these particular issues. And he's also testified before the U.S. House and Senate on several occasions. And he has as well produced different documentaries such as The Abolitionists and Operation Toussaint. And the movie as well, Sound of Freedom, where Jim Cavazell is portraying Tim Ballard. And as well, he has several books on his subject matter as well. So, moving forward, we're going to talk about something called the Whiteboard Meeting, as covered by American Crime Journal here. Tim Ballard's secret plan to monetize his r rescue nonprofit. Operation Underground Railroad, and to use his plan to proselytize prospective converts for the Mormon Church. Ballard turned a decade-long search for a three-year-old Haitian boy, Gardy Marty, into a fundraising stratagem. While claiming he was closer and closer to finding the missing child, Ballard's prospects of finding him were actually gro growing dimmer and dimmer, and Haitian police even tortured a suspect fingered by Ballard. The accused Haitian kidnapper, who had been a member of Marty's family Mormon congregation, did not confess. So now I'm going to explain what this particular diagram is and its function here. So basically there was a supposed psychic who claimed to know where Gardy was being held as a labor slave. And Tim Bell, and she was connected to Tim Ballard's OUR nonprofit, so that's Operation Underground Railroad, and apparently this is not registered with the IRS. There was a meeting Ballard had in August 2019, which is where this particular diagram was shown. This is actually a restructured diagram of what he drew on a whiteboard, which is why this is referred to as the whiteboard meeting. And in this meeting of October 2019, people even signed a, uh, of August 2019, excuse me, people even signed a confidentiality agreement. And a diagram was turned over to Davis County investigators and a criminal investigation was conducted into Tim Ballard and Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes. Ballard had a diagram, and again, this one is restructured for the, to show people what's going on. And it shows several Ballard-controlled for-profit and non-profit entities with, with multiple paths to flow to Tim Ballard's main for-profit company, how OUR would bring more converts into the Mormon faith, and a deeper involvement with the Latter-day Saints Church's presiding apostle, M. Russell Ballard, who, by the way, is not related to Tim Ballard and OUR's takeover of an orphanage in Haiti in an apparent attempt to monetize adoptions. So, some of that information I won't be able to cover in its entirety in this video. However, the links will be left in the description, and people can feel free to watch these videos after themselves. So, the same publicity, sizzle, that generates donations and profits could bring masses of people into the Mormon church, which is his, and I quote, capitalism begets church converts plan. So first you have Slave Stealers, this for-profit corporation, which has Brian Norton, Tim Ballard, and silent partner Russell Ballard. 
And then outside a nonprofit is this Child Liberation Foundation, which is ran by former OUR operative Paul Hutchinson. And this organization was to donate to multiple entities, any of the six entities that are shown here. And Sizzle basically is referring to organizations that would attract donors through quote-unquote humanitarian missions, especially that of revolving around trafficking and such. So, in particular as well, Glenn Beck is involved in some of these organizations, which we'll get to as well. But what ends up happening basically is this outside nonprofit donates to these six organizations here. And these six organizations put money into TimBallard.com, which of course has to do with his movie, different speaking engagements, and books as well. And then the money from TimBallard.com gets filtered right back into Slave Stealers. So that's how the money laundering operation essentially works. So Ballard is actually the grandson of... Apostles Melvin J. Ballard and Hiram Smith. And Hiram Smith is Joseph Smith's brother, and Joseph Smith is the founder of the Mormon Church. And Joseph Smith is also a Freemason, as we can see by this particular hand sign here, when the middle finger and the ring finger are essentially attached there. That is one of the particular discrete signs of showing where your allegiance lies. And there are many photos that show that, such as of Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits doing that, and the various popes as well. And we can see this right over here. Why is this hand, why is the use of the hand considered to be so significant as a means of concealed communication by occultists? The Herder Dictionary of Symbols states that the hand is a symbol of activity and power. It notes that finding oneself in the hands of a ruler or god means being in that person's power, but also standing under that person's protection, if you say so. So yeah, this is an interesting website here. I'm not inclined to agree with all of the information that is shown. However, the signs displayed are definitely accurate, that's for sure. So... You can see as well that Tim Ballard has been featured on the front of LDS Living Magazine, that's Latter-day Saints Church, which is just another way of saying the Mormon Church. And now, about the Nazarene Fund in particular. Basically, this has to do with ISIS and problems out in the Middle East, is where the direction is focused here. In the vacuum left by ISIS, new political players, some just as ruthless as its predecessor, have taken up the mantle of power. Also, nation states such as Iran are heavily involved in the area and are making the lives of Christians, Yazidis, and other minorities very difficult and dangerous. The Yazidis are essentially a minority within Iran and Iraq. And they are an Aryan-esque group, very much like the Basques, Berbers, Celtics, and Gaelic peoples. So, definitely rare features with blonde hair or red hair and blue eyes or green eyes. So, we've also expanded our operations into Africa, Asia, and Haiti. And the Nazarene Fund will continue to grow, assist Christians and persecuted minorities, etc., etc., and we see Glenn Beck's name on the website here as well, who has a conservative-esque talk show. So, Glenn is not the only founder of the Nazarene Fund, but he also sits on the board. And what happens when the children are rescued? It depends who is rescued, but once approved by the Kurdish authorities, we partner with organizations that work with vulnerable Yazidis in country and by providing administrative and lo logistical support enable them to be considered under Australia's humanitarian program. Many have subs subsequently been resettled in Australia where they receive good care and can start a new life. I need to look into that a little bit further, but I know that Australia has their own kind of refugee crisis that I'm not so savvy about. So I can't really see how dumping a problem onto another nation is necessarily solving a problem because I think as well that 
Australia is bombarded with fifth generation warfare of all kinds of immigration, very much like how Canada and the US are bombarded by that as well. So how are TNF, how are the Nazarene Fund and Operation Underground Railroad connected? Yes, they are. Although they run as separate organizations, they're considered sister organizations and often work with one another on operation projects. Both of them are under the same CEO, Tim Ballard. Are Nazarene Fund and Mercury One the same thing? Mercury One is a charity founded by TNF's founder Glenn Beck, and TNF often works with Mercury One to rescue those in need. However, they are separate organizations but work closely together. So both Mercury One and the Nazarene Fund were listed on that diagram that I was showing in the whiteboard meeting. So Mercury One is a nonprofit organization founded by Glenn Beck about five years ago, and this article was actually written in 2017. So the main thrusts of the organization have been education, disaster relief, veteran assistance, humanitarian assistance to refugees. And as part of Mercury One's mission, the Nazarene Fund was created to fund the rescue of Christian refugees from ISIS-held territories. So if the reports of refugees and rescues restored to safe places are accurate, Mercury One has performed valuable service within a short period of time. And there have been some red flags shown along the way. In past, Mercury One has reported grants of $100,000 in 2013, $104,000 in 2014, and to David Barton's Wall Builders Organization. In 2014, the stated reason for the grant was to provide help and resources to individuals affected by unforeseen disasters. That's definitely written in a very vague sense, that's for sure. Furthermore, what makes grants of concern is that David Barton is the chair of the board of Mercury One. He oversaw the granting of $204,000 to himself via his position at Mercury One. So there we go, we have this David Barton character as well partaking in the money laundering operation just like Glenn Beck and Tim Ballard we have so far. Now, what's interesting here is the way that this is all kind of given away is through this paragraph I have highlighted. It says, if you have supported Mercury One in the past or have followed our journey through Glenn Beck, you may know that for each need we created a separate funding campaign so that we could allocate every penny of your gift to support each specific initiative. It has been amazing to see the outpouring of passion and support for these projects, but it also prohibited Mercury One from immediately distributing funding quickly when a new and urgent need arose. So I can't understand why Mercury One would have been able to take funds designated for a disaster relief and use them in the crisis needed not just give it to another organization it's definitely suspicious to say the least because you have no idea how much of the actual funding put in from the perspective of donors they have no idea how much of the funding is actually contributed to real humanitarian projects so there we have Glenn Beck and David Barton's end now, here, I threw these articles in here because I wanted to talk about QAnon and basically how the Tim Ballard movie and things going on are just desensitizing the public toward things and not really revealing anything true, unfortunately. Um, so it says, while Wikipedia, the government-controlled propaganda channel of disinformation, calls Pizzagate a conspiracy theory that went viral during the 2016 U.S. presidential election cycle, it was actually a mind control psyop orchestrated by controlled opposition. It was created in anticipation of the U.S. election ritual, because people are selected, not elected, and good call for the choice of words there, Joaquin Bartol. This particular guy who writes these articles is out in Sweden. So it was created in the 
U.S. election ritual between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump to create a new made-up problem of Russian fake news on the current left-wing world stage, the first step of the United Nations infodemic agenda, part of Agenda 2030. With the public programming of fake news and to label conspiracy theorists as being right-wing or alt-right and potentially crazy and dangerous, to be able to label them as terrorists. This also led to increased censorship in social media, especially on Facebook with quote-unquote fact-checkers, which was timed with the next big PSYOP, that of the staged and fake scam here, which we can see. I'm not going to say those words either. Now, this particular PSYOP was used to desensitize people to the rumors of these particular things going on and these things as well. And in a right-wing universe, it was used to promote Trump as the false savior, the hero who would quote-unquote drain the swamp, which of course never happened, as he is part of the world stage and part of the PSYOP. Yes, Operation Warp Speed, indeed. Sorry, I meant to call you President Warp Speed. So, in short, this particular SOP was initiated by News Punch, David Icke, Alex Jones' Info War, the vigilant, the vigilant Citizen, Mike Cernovich, Rebel News, Roger Stone, and other controlled opposition and disinfo agents. It repeatedly spread on the very controlled shill and bot ridden platforms of 4chan, Reddit, and Twitter. Bluebird logo, as in Project Bluebird, Mind Control. Then Julian Assange of WikiLeaks was used to spread the fake emails of Hillary Clinton, Jesuit John Podesta, and Anthony Weiner. These emails was used by controlled opposition of David Wilcock and David Seaman to spread false stories of cryptic messages and secret code words leading the way to Comet Ping Pong Pizzeria in Washington, D.C., claiming to be part of this particular thing here that is propagated. This is a classic psyop by the textbook using the method of creating vague mystery as a distraction to neutralize previous information about what is really going on into conditioning the public to avoid other topics. So, yeah, basically this whole thing is just essentially a mockery and it's really about showing at very best half-truths in order to condition people to accept the fact that there's apparently these things going on and it's not to say that this particular thing does not happen in the slightest it's just that the media only reveals what it is they want to reveal to us so names like Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell and such are thrown out to the public because frankly they're just players on the world stage and they're likely covering for something much bigger going on so why not throw out a false story with perhaps a degree of half-truth in there in order to desensitize us to things that are going on? And we will see why eventually. So, so the Q, the CIA-controlled Q PSYOP June, uh, on June 24th was resurrected during the Maxwell verdict. And we can see as well that Q uses the same phrase from darkness to light, which is a phrase that Freemasons use because through their rituals and advancement through degrees, essentially, the person that is advancing through the degrees is typically wearing blindfold and led around the lodge with a cable toe of sorts wrapped around their neck. And they are learning new things like different handshakes and penalty signs and manners of communicating with each other when they are quizzed on all the previous things that they have learned and then new things are new tools if you will are revealed to them hence why masons refer to their practice as the craft so controlled opposition and their shills are not far behind with stories about the maxwell family and their connection to hambro all to try to validate this theater, this distraction, and this psyop to fool gullible Hutards into believing that these sickos actually have been arrested and children rescued from these underground tunnels by white hats or whatever. And white hat is a term for high-ranking masons in the lodge itself. So, pretty interesting all this terminology that they use here. And how it is they fool the general masses with literally the craft and Freemasonic terminology. 
And this is a particular video I'm linking here where Jim Cavazell propagates these Q-related conspiracy theories by using this particular term right over here that I've just highlighted. And as well, the thing that is unique about uh, Jim Cavazell is he's part of Sigma Chi, which is a fraternity of sorts. So while the reality of Tim Ballard is he's a dis disinformation agent that belongs to the Mormon Church, and I had discussed that a little further in my previous video, is used as controlled opposition against these so-called networks and to spread disinformation about this type of hoax here that I had just called out there and to promote the QAnon PSYOP. He worked for the US Department of Homeland Security where he was trained and conditioned before being assigned his role and he founded Operation Underground Railroad and the Nazarene Fund for those purposes. So. The movie stars mind-controlled actor Jim Cavazell as Tim Ballard, just as in Jesuit provocateur agent Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ. It is produced by Angel Studios, which is pure mock mockery and symbolic to the choice of Jim Cavazell as lead actor. Jim is used within Hollywood to play a Antichrist archetype. He is a member of the international Freemasonic fraternity Sigma Chi, like... Brad Pitt, Woody Harrison, Tom Selleck, David Letterman, and many other CIA mind-controlled puppets. Interesting choice of symbolism there. So, Sigma Chi was started by these seven young men, Benjamin Pyatt Runkle, Thomas Cowan Bell, William Lewis Lockwood, Isaac M. Jordan, Daniel William Cooper, Franklin Howard Scobie, and James Parks Caldwell wanted something better in a fraternity during their college experience and from that recognition a dream was born the fraternity of Sigma Chi in short Sigma Chi began because good men chose to act okay whatever you say and it was started in 1855 so now I'm gonna read its little motto here in this sign you shall conquer in hoc signo vinces okay so now I'm going to conclude with some thoughts of my own here. What I want to say is that this kind there's all kinds of programming in Hollywood that condition us to think a certain way. So for instance, I'm actually going to use Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight film as an example. We see that in order to preserve the image of Harvey Dent or Two-Face, who is the district attorney of Gotham City, in order to preserve his hopium image, if you will, Commissioner James Gordon and Batman agree to keep people in the dark about his true colors and preserve the image of a so-called good man, which is just hopium-based programming for people because you see a superhero like Batman condone this sort of hopium thing, and then subconsciously we the people start to accept such a thing. And the thing, too, is with movies like this, and with even, you know, the Epstein story, with anything that is shown to us through the media, pop culture and such, we get angry, these people feed off our energy, and then we demand a solution to a problem, and the solution ends up being given. And that solution will be biometric ID. And so that's why they're conditioning people in regards to this trafficking issue in particular, because this is how they bring about the their plans its problem reaction solution and also too i just want to say for anything that they are showing us it is simply to condition us that is simply the only reason it is basically revelation of the method and at best there might be a degree of half truths but you're not waking anybody up to anything hypothetically i don't in order to know that pornography exists, I don't need to watch a pornographic film to know that. So it's the same deal with this trafficking issue. Anyway, thanks very much everyone for watching. Take care of yourselves and protect your children. Thank you very much.